Hey everyone, uh, my name's Calvin, and I'm going to show you how you can use Mandala Creator Pro Floral Edition to make some cool mandalas. So uh, just download that folder from Creative Market, and then unzip it. Launch Illustrator. Uh, this uh, version will work with CS5, CS6, uh, and Creative Cloud. I'm going to do the, this demonstration in uh, Creative Cloud because uh, my recording software doesn't work so well with uh, CS5. But uh, this version of Mandala Creator works great with CS5. So uh, once you've launched Illustrator, go to File, Open, and then navigate to where you stored that unzipped uh, Floral Edition Mandala Creator uh, folder. And then inside you'll have a folder that says Extras. That'll contain some files uh, you might need to make your own pattern brushes. Um, that's a little complicated. I have some tutorials I've included in there. Um, it's not for every user, but if you're comfortable with Illustrator, by all means, uh, give it a try and you can make your own uh, uh, pattern brushes that will work with Mandala Creator. But uh, the, this version of Mandala Creator has over 200 brushes, so you probably have enough. So uh, after the extras, we've got some uh, action scripts here. Uh, I'll show you how to load those. This is the template, and then this is the README that'll have some links to this video and other videos. So uh, since we're in uh, open in Illustrator, we're going to open this template. There it is. It'll look just like this. Um, make sure that it's the right one. So Mandala Creator Floral Edition. If you have other versions of Mandala Creator, it's easy to get it mixed up. So now we need to load the action scripts. So window, actions. And then uh, if you see any actions here already, I really recommend that you clear them. And then we'll load some actions. So back to that folder we unzipped. And here are the two actions I mentioned. Uh, we'll start with an eight-pointed mandala. Now, I've included these. These scripts are both a little bit different. They'll look the same when you open them up. But uh, this one has this one will create a mandala with basically six points. And this one will create a mandala with eight points. So we'll open that. Here's our scripts. So make sure, see it says floral edition here on top and floral edition down here. Uh, the different scripts won't work with the other versions of uh, Mandala Creator. Uh, they'll only work with the, uh, uh, the templates they're packaged with. So now we need to open up the brush panel. So we'll go to Window, Brushes. And these are all the patterns. These are all the Mandala patterns. Um, and they're all stored as brushes here. Uh, and these scripts here work with these brushes to make a mandala, and I'll show you how. Let's move this over here. Okay, now we can see the scripts, we can see the brushes. Now we can click this blue button up here, start new mandala, to create a new mandala. And it's made a circle with the right uh, graphic style uh, that makes it appear like an eight-pointed mandala with this particular pattern. Now we can select it and change the pattern to any one of these. And uh, what I've done here with the brushes is I've organized them. So that's what this little uh, color-coded square is. So these uh, sort of turquoise C patterns, these are all, you can use the patterns for whatever you want. But these C ones are specifically made for the center, the first step of the mandala. Because how we build mandalas is we'll select a pattern that we're happy with. How about this one? And then we'll go to Duplicate Ring. Right, and it's going to create basically another shape, a duplicate of the other one, directly behind it. And that's how we build mandalas. So we'll start new mandala, select a shape that I think is good. This is actually my favorite one here. And once we're happy with that, we can create another ring, a concentric ring, uh, and select a different pattern. So we'll go to duplicate ring. And we can use this grow ring, we can use shrink ring to change the size of it. Uh, and uh, let's select a different pattern. You could select a, another C pattern if you wanted to, like that. Or you could select any one of these. But I've organized these uh, by type and by complexity. So sometimes uh, in a mandala, you want this sort of complexity of the design, the closeness of the lines to be the same throughout the whole mandala. You don't want some parts to be really big and some parts to be uh, really, really tight, tight patterns. Although sometimes I think a mandalas look good with a little bit of white space. So I'm happy with this ring. 
So uh, I'll create another one. I'll go to Duplicate Ring. I can grow it a little bit so we can see it. And uh, let's select a different pattern. I'll go to one of these. See these orange ones? These are the medium complexity patterns. The S ones are the simple patterns. These are the centers. These X ones, these are the really complicated, dense patterns. And they might work better towards the outside of a mandala, not so good in the center. These are the arches. I'll show you those. Uh, and uh, these are the borders, uh, pretty just simple designs. Uh, and these are the flares. I'll show you how to use those in a minute. So while this, this outside ring, this last ring is selected, we'll select sort of, I'm looking for a kind of a round pattern that will fit, fit in here. So some of these patterns are quite small. So what's happened is it's just being sort of uh, covered up by the design in front. So we'll grow it so you can see it now. And then we have these purple scripts here. These let you rotate the pattern. So we'll rotate it 22 and a half degrees. And that'll make the pattern line up just exactly in the middle of these two points. So let's shrink it a little bit. Maybe try another one. Oh, that's cool. OK, we'll shrink that a little more so it lines up. There, that's nice. And then uh, we'll duplicate ring, create another one. It's just hiding behind there. Uh, and we can select a different pattern. I'm looking for kind of a long, pointy one. Maybe this one will work. You can grow that. Let's you can rotate it as well. OK, that's pretty nice. And uh, when I'm happy with that, I'm going to use one of these arch patterns. So we'll duplicate this ring, scroll down to the uh, A's, and We'll select, well, that's all right. We'll shrink it a little bit. OK. There, I'm happy with that. And um, now we can add another pattern. So we'll duplicate it. It's just gone to the back there. And we'll select another round pattern that will sort of fit in between here. You'll, uh, when you make a lot of mandalas, you'll sort of start to discover your own sort of technique and your own preferences. Uh, the mandalas that I've kind of settled with are usually have a lot of these arch patterns, a lot of empty space, or at least a kind of regular empty space, like empty space, empty space, empty space. And then I do points, arches, and then I like to fill in some of these pointy ones with these sort of half round shapes. So let's rotate this one. It's a little bit complicated, so I'm going to select a simpler one. Yeah, that's nice. We'll shrink it, duplicate it to make another copy behind, and then shrink it to make a kind of a tight border there. That looks nice. See right here, so we have this nice double line. Now we can add a, uh, let's try a flare. Flares are just designs that sort of project out, and they look, they look best when covered up by an arch. So let's select this one. This is nice. And um, Actually, I'm pretty happy with the size it is right now. So we'll duplicate the ring. And we'll change the pattern to another arch. Maybe something like this. There, see, so now this flare has kind of accented. It's kind of, it's kind of been added to this arch pattern. So this is how you can make really unique stuff with Mandala Creator. Because it lets you stack patterns in like infinite number of ways. So even though these are patterns that I've made, you can combine them and modify them and create something that's totally, totally, totally unique. So now we can try the borders. I'll show you how to use the borders here. These are just simple. They'll look good on the very outs, outer edge of the mandala. So let's do duplicate ring there. And uh, let's select this little scalloped one. Now you can't see it because it's a really small pattern. So we'll grow it. Now it looks a little bit a little bit bold, so that's why I have these shrink patterns. This will make the pattern uh, smaller, and this will make it bigger again. So we'll make it smaller, uh, shrink it a bit. Okay, duplicate it again. Let's try another nice border, maybe some leaves. There, here's some kind of directional leaves. 
Now you could shrink those forever. You could make them really, really small if you wanted to. So this is another feature that lets you use these sort of default patterns and create something unique. Let's, um, that looks pretty nice, actually. Maybe a little bigger. Yeah, I think that's fine. OK, so I'm happy with this mandala. Now I'll deselect it here. And um, let's, at this point, you could do some final tweaks before you uh, run the cleanup scripts. So right now, we have a few different thicknesses of lines. And the cleanup script makes everything the same thickness. So we'll select this one. We'll grow it. Kind of fill in that space there. OK, that looks nice. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to do the cleanup line script. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And then uh, at this point, it's still vector, and there's still a lot of layers. So this would be your maybe your last chance to change the um, stroke width. So right now, I think this is a little bit thick. You know, If I'm making this mandala for a coloring book, I might try a half point stroke. So I just type that in there, press Enter. And there, now it's changed all the lines. Um, sometimes, if you accidentally give this a zero point stroke, right? Like if you're scrolling, using the scroll wheel to change the width, sometimes you'll have some, uh, some sort of errors that happen when the graphic styles get cleared. So if you accidentally uh, scroll down to a zero point mandala, or a zero point uh, stroke width, zero. So if you accidentally uh, made it into a zero point, then um, bringing it back to a one point will cause some problems. OK, so immediately you can see there's some weird stuff going on here. And the reason what's happened, uh, the reason this happened is because there's so many different graphic styles attached to these different layers. And when you make the stroke to a zero point, it clears the graphic styles and starts from like a totally blank page which means some of the designs don't, don't display properly. So if you see this happening, you need to do uh, undo cleanup lines. It's going to delete that and then uh, replace it with the uh, original mandala you had just after you pressed this. So let's change it to a 0.6 stroke. I really recommend not scrolling, but instead typing it in. Or if you want to change it, you can do thicker stroke uh, and then thinner stroke, uh, it's up to you. And um, although this one isn't a super fine controlled tool because it's sort of exponential. So if you want a really exact, precise stroke width, use this. But if you're happy and you want to just sort of do some experiments, then I recommend this one. And now once I've made it uh, a, uh, a 0.6 stroke, a really fine stroke here, I've noticed that there's a little a little bit of a weird thing going on there that I don't like. So you can still, at this stage, you can still change the mandala just a little bit. So I'm going to go into Isolate Selected Group and then select that specific ring. Now it's changed from just a ring now to a shape. Okay, So now we have these eight shapes, but I can still use these tools. Shrink, shrink. But when I shrink it, it'll sometimes change the stroke width. Okay. So this stroke width now will be different than that stroke width. So you just want to just go over it again, select the whole mandala, and then type in the stroke width that you want, enter, and it will uh, overwrite uh, that minor, minor difference. And uh, there, that's pretty much how you'll make your own mandalas. Now, this is all vector right now. There's a lot of information here, a lot of layers. You can see this. So if you wanted to create a simple image or a simple vector shape, an outline, for example, that you were going to send to a, uh, like a vinyl printer or send to a t-shirt printer. Or if you just wanted to get rid of the white or just extract the white shapes or just extract the black shapes, the best way to do that is with Live Trace. So to turn this into a simpler vector shape, we have to turn it into an image. Okay, So we'll rasterize it. So while the mandala is selected, you can go to Object, Rasterize. Make sure that it's a high resolution, and make sure the background is white. And we'll do OK. This will take a second. 
there. Now it's taken this vector mandala and turned it into an image. So it's flattened everything out. There's no more layers of vector, it's just an image. Now to get the vectors back out, we're going to have this uh, illustrator trace out all the black lines. And uh, Illustrator has a really easy plugin that does that. And it's called Image Trace, and it's built right in. Just select the image that you want to trace, and then you'll have this option pop up here. So we can click this, or we can just click this little arrow and select the default option. There we go, it's traced. Now you can see it doesn't look so good because this is a really fine line that we're tracing. And uh, so in this case, if you've traced it with the default script and it doesn't look right, you can uh, uh, adjust the settings. So we'll go to this panel here. While well, th this uh, traced image is selected, we'll go to the options. There it is. And uh, we'll turn off preview so we can speed it up and we'll open up advanced. So what I recommend is if you change the threshold to being uh, maybe pretty high, 200 or something like that, max out the paths, max out the corners, minimize the noise, and uh, make sure uh, that it's, it's snapping the curves to the lines, and this isn't checked. We don't want it to ignore white. We want it to just be a black and white image. So just like this, black and white. So trace. There we go. Pretty happy with that. We can look at it a little closer to make sure. Okay, it looks like it's kind of rough. It's kind of rough. So we've got too many paths still. So we'll open this up and uh, uncheck preview. And let's change the paths to half. There, that's better. Much, much smoother. So we will zoom out, take a look at it. I like that. It has a nice, well, when you trace images, it usually gives it a nice kind of a handmade look. Um, if you want the sharp vector lines, keep it, keep it, um, you can click this here, undo cleanup lines, and it will bring it back to where you before, where it's just all these stacked vector shapes. But if you want to just uh, change the white or change the black or send it to a vinyl cutter, you'll need to do this process. So after we're happy with the tracing, we'll go to expand. And now it's turned it back into vectors, actually just an outline. Basically, it's turned it into a bunch of black shapes and white shapes. Okay. Then we can ungroup it. Go to Object, Ungroup. And uh, as long as there's nothing else in your document, uh, like let's zoom out here and check. There's nothing else there. We can do use this uh, Select All function or uh, Select Select same. So while that white shape is selected, we can tell it to select all the other white in this document. So we'll go to select, same, and then we'll do fill color. So it's selected all the white, and I'm going to delete it. So now what we're left with is just a bunch of black shapes. So after you, uh, you're happy with uh, removing the white, we can group it again so we don't accidentally separate some of the parts, so the whole mandala moves together. And uh, then we can change the color or basically do anything you'd ordinarily do with a uh, vector shape. Um, all this tracing stuff, this is optional. You don't have to do it. It just depends on uh, what you want to do with your uh, final, final mandala. So uh, hopefully this is a pretty good overview of Mandala Creator Pro Floral Edition. Uh, hopefully it'll get you started. Uh, you'll learn a lot as you play with it and play with the different different uh, functions and stuff. But if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me an email, send me a message on Creative Market, or just leave a comment here. And uh, other than that, guys, uh, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.